Good day. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Atari 8-Bit Gameplay. Probably I shouldn't boost myself up out of my frame of my video as the first thing I do when I start recording. But hey, what are you going to do? So I've got loaded up here um, Boulder Dash 3. Now, uh, I did a little bit of reading about this because I saw immediately at the bottom there Atari version by Homesoft, and it is dated 2007, which obviously is um, way past the time that the uh, Atari was, that there was uh, software being made commercially for the Atari. Ah, okay, so here we have a title screen with the same music from the original Boulder Dash. <clears throat> Boulder Dash 3, the official version. Pardon me. So, 1986 by First Star. This game was never released for the Ataris, according to uh, the source of all knowledge, Wikipedia. So it was converted, here we go, Atari version, 2007 by Homesoft. Press button to play, one player, one joystick. Okay, so the interface, oh, black and monochrome, why? Is that a little spacesuit dude? Interesting. This is different. Okay, well anyway, I don't know why it's monochrome, but uh, here we go. And why we're not Rockford anymore, but we're a little space guy. Sound effects appear to be... Oh, what is going on here? Oh, you can only dig the... Okay, I see, I see, I see. Okie dokie. Just take a little bit of mental recalibration here. I need to lay my hands on 80 gems. Sound effects are original. Um, I didn't take a look, a comprehensive look at uh, what platforms this was released for. But it was more than just, like, for example, Commodore 64 was one, and I think Apple II, and maybe Spectrum as well. Okay, so we don't have bucket loads of time here. I don't know where the door, the exit door is. I wonder why they chose to make it a, a space theme. Oh, whoops, don't drop, don't drop gems on your own head. That is one of the cardinal rules. Okay, this upper right area here is a dead end, and I guess I don't actually need to release that boulder now, do I? But then I wasn't quite sure at that point what I was doing, so there you go. I'll maybe explore a little bit off to the left here and see what the lay of the land is. Okay, bottom left also appears to be a bit of a dead end. And the top left is a, appears to be a bit of a dead end. Or a complete dead end. Interesting. So the question is, where is the exit? I guess top middle, I don't know about yet. <coughs> So is 80 going to be all the gems there are? One wonders. They're all dead ends, okay. Good enough, not bucket loads of time. I think I said that already. As long as I don't pin myself in anywhere or cover up the door, which the exit door, which uh, is not at all obvious where that might be. Okay, I think, let's see here. Oh, I guess I didn't go up in this little center area here either, did I? I 
wonder if uh, 80 is. Is uh, all the gems. I'm not going to have any extra time here, am I? Oh. No. Hmm. Well, I hope the exit's this way because I just trapped myself. Luckily, it was. Okay. So instead of gray, we have, oh, the interesting how the exit, the entrance is at the same spot as the exit from the last level. I don't really remember that ever being the case before. Okay, well, let's see here. I need to have a look at the top. Oh, what have we here? Chompers. Interesting. Those remind me of something. Um... Jawbreaker or something like that comes to mind. Whoops. Okay, here we are. What happens when I let these guys out? They come to kill me. So they seem to be similar to the sort of square pulsating baddies from the original series. Or the original two games, I should say. Yeah, if I hadn't mentioned it before, this is Oh, just a sec, I just had a I just had a thought. I think right. You have to blow your way in to get the gems. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So there's some strategy here. Okay, well that didn't work. Uh oh. Okay, I think I've... All right, well, apparently I succeeded in getting one of the one of the areas opened up. Did I blow up all the baddies? I guess I did. Um, that's gonna make this a little harder. <laughs> a lot harder <laughs> like impossible interesting all right well there is no way for me to finish this so away I go I wonder how you go about separating one of those things from the pack since I think that's what's needed. Let's see if I can figure that out here. Come at it from this direction. Okay, well, that didn't work. <laughs> Alrighty, let's have uh, another try here. Yeah, I, I gotta say, I'm not sold on the whole space theme. I don't. I don't know. I'm, I guess that was probably just a, a marketing thing, but still, it doesn't do anything for me. Uh, let's see here. Oh, crap. Oh, shoot. What I meant to do was run right up to the top alongside that. Well, no, I didn't. I meant to run up underneath it. Oh, game over. 
game over okay well i don't know that this is different and or compelling enough for me to carry on with this um i think i think it was written by the original well i don't know if that's true or not either i guess i guess i shouldn't say that i was gonna say i think it was originally written for the other platforms by the by the same programmer as did the first two but um, i don't know whether that's true or not this uh this conversion has taken, I think, the probably the first game as its framework, and then just put in the level data and the graphics for the uh, for the levels uh, implemented versions of them for the Atari, which is probably not an insignificant amount of work. I would imagine it's probably quite a bit of work. But um, anyway, nice to have a game that wasn't originally made for the Atari, ported over by uh, by Homesoft in this case, and uh, so that's that's a good a good service for the Atari community, I would say. So tip of the hat to to whoever is is Homesoft. I actually don't even know. I've sort of followed their work for a long time, but I'm not sure who's behind it. So whoever you are, thanks so much. And that is going to do it for my fairly brief look at Boulder Dash 3. So thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.